It's time now for Perspective. The blockade imposed on the Gaza Strip has made daily life for its two million residents a constant struggle for the past 15 years, disrupting every aspect of existence from, from access to basic goods, to schooling, to travel and employment. The periodic outbreaks of war with Israel have only deepened the humanitarian crisis, leaving nearly every civilian in the small enclave somehow affected. While faced with all of these enormous difficulties, Malak Matar turned to painting as an outlet. A form of both healing and resistance, her brightly colored paintings often depict women who are grappling with the daily realities in Gaza. She joins me now. Thank you so much for coming on the program, Malak. Thank you for having me. Could you start perhaps by talking about your childhood growing up in Gaza and how that led to your work as an artist? Definitely. So I grew up in the Gaza Strip and uh, I was met with a reality that I'm not originally from the Gaza Strip. So I was a refugee. So when I was at school, they asked me to write my name plus my origin city, which was a village that is called al Jora uh, village. So I grew up, where is home? Is Gaza my home? Is the village that no longer exists because it's fully occupied by Israel is my home? So I was a confused kid, but a kid who loved living and who loved exploring and experimenting. So I, I was in, in my school doing my final exams till we had this emergency that everybody should leave the class. So it was a surreal scenes of hundreds and hundreds of, of students leaving their schools and going to their homes. So this scene was such a terrifying scene because I felt I'm getting close to death, especially looking at the sky and seeing military planes very close um, to me and to my school. So I learned that this was called a war, um, but to be politically correct, it's an Israeli attack. So going back, uh, I did not have any uh, mental health support. So seeing people getting killed and, and living with, with the post-traumatic symptoms, with interrupted growth, and then going back to school as nothing happened, life moved on so quickly, and I became, eventually, I'm 21 years old, and I'm a four Israeli attack survivor. So you could imagine uh, the amount of trauma, the amount of oppression, and the amount of struggles that one goes through in, in the daily life and a daily um, in, in, in a daily life, especially in the Gaza Strip, it's not only uh, politically a difficult to place, but it's also um, a place where you feel like you are living in a prison because it's an open air prison. You don't have access to full hours of electricity, to clean water, um, to also with women. It's there is also as a woman, there is it's not an easy uh, life living in a very um, conservative society. And speaking of some of those difficulties, those, those struggles in daily life that you mentioned there, I imagine that producing artwork in that type of context isn't easy. Uh, what challenges have, have you faced trying to continue to get your work out there, given the situation in Gaza? And uh, for me, when I was painting during the last attack, uh, doing painting was impossible. Uh, the only major art store in the Gaza Strip was completely bombed. Uh, there is limitation to how much Israel uh, allows art material to get in. So since the attack, the canvas, which is the most uh, important material, was not allowed to get into the Gaza Strip since the attack. And this tells um, about the fragility, like why not let artists paint the reality, paint the attack, paint the losses, because the last attack uh, was one of, of the hardest, although the, the 2014 attack was 52 days, but the intensity of the last attack was uh, way beyond uh, one imagination. Um, so, of course, artwork gets censored uh, by the military. So every time I ship my artwork, uh, I get a notification by the mail office in the Gaza Strip, do not paint anything political, do not paint anything that might be triggering. As uh, Although, uh, like, however, uh, this stays in the back of my mind, although I don't paint implicit political um, symbols in, in my artwork, but I do feel limitation uh, every time I produce artwork. Can you speak to um, mm -hmm. I, what I've, heard, I've read of you in the past is that you see art as a form of therapy. Uh, can, you, can you speak to that? Of course, I, I do feel because the way I started making art, uh, first of all, I come from um, an artistic family. My uncle is um, an art professor. 
um, I have uncle who uh, also great at music, my grandparents at poetry. So I grew up with this atmosphere of art being a great way of self-expression. During the 2014 um, Israeli attack, it was a very long time. It was 52 days, but it felt like 52 years. And what really struck me was the murder of my neighbor who lived just one block away. So a person who was part of my childhood, seeing them murdered in such a graphic way, made me realize that I can't really keep the feelings inside me. I need to get some to get my feelings out to try to discharge all these overwhelming feelings that I'm getting killed. So I started making sketches. I started using watercolor, and you know this is the way it it started. One year after, I started having exhibitions, and of course, my painting. However, somewhere censored had more freedom than me because I was not allowed to travel to attend my exhibitions. So this is also a challenge that we face as a Palestinian artist in the Gaza Strip, which is not given, which is not having permissions to attend with our uh, paintings. All right, Malak, I'm so sorry to cut it short. I have so many questions for you. I wanted to talk more in depth about your beautiful pieces, but this is unfortunately all we have time for. Thank you so much for your time and for coming on the show today. Thank you very much.